It is good to see you, Creator. I'm going to teach you how to create custom Stinger transitions using DaVinci Resolve, which is incredibly powerful and 100% free. We're going to take the output file with alpha transparency and import it into OBS Studio so that it can be used as a Stinger transition. This tutorial is going to empower you and teach you how to make modifications to the file so that you can add your own logos and your own color harmonies to your own animations for your live stream. This one is gonna be good. Let's get some. Well, I'm sure you've popped around the internet and seen many tutorials on this subject. And most people are talking about using After Effects as the primary way to generate the alpha channel file for OBS Studio. In my opinion, After Effects is not the best solution for two reasons. One, the software is complex. It is powerful, but it is extremely difficult to learn. Number two, the software costs $21 a month, and uh, Adobe just keeps on billing you every month. After two years, that's $500. That is a lot of damn money for a software program. So why not learn a program that is free? DaVinci Resolve, it's free, it's powerful, and it's a lot easier to learn than After Effects. So if I can get you through the process of developing this file, importing your assets, right, adjusting the way the, uh, the, the, the logos and the shapes move around, adding some sounds in there, getting it in, exporting it out using the correct codex so that it can be used properly by OBS, if I can get you through that process, you can circle your wagons and go back to the beginning and make adjustments to color and movement, add your own assets in there, and make your own custom Stinger transition. So this is, a, this is going to be a simplistic learning experience to help you get started making your own. I'm excited about doing it. Let's get into it right now. Here we go. Okay, I just clicked the DaVinci Resolve Start icon and it presents you with a project screen. I'm not going to worry about existing projects. I'm going to click New Project and name it alpha video okay create and it presents us with a blank screen and the first thing that we need to do is add our assets i'm going to add a transparent ping which is a youtube logo and i'm going to add some audio files so that it adds a little bit of sound effect to the motion here so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the edit icon in the lower part of the screen okay this is the primary editor location. So as you can see on the left, there is a media pool. That's where we want to drop the uh, assets in here. So I'm going to click my Explorer folder and I'm going to go in and grab the YouTube logo. I'm going to drag that in there and I'm going to drag an MP3 and a wave just so that I can prove to you that both formats will work with this process. You can use MP3 or wave, minimize that. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag the YouTube transparent ping into the editor. Okay, just let it go. Now it defaults to being fairly long in size. See this little scroller here? This makes the, the visual area of the timeline big or small. So I want to just make it so it fills the screen here. And I'm going to hit my space bar and count to two because that's how long I want this animation to be. One, two. So it looks like two seconds is right there. And I'm going to click the blade and cut it right at that two second mark. And then I'm going to hit the A key and select the piece that I just cut and hit the back key. That's how you delete the right way in DaVinci, not the delete key, because what happens if you hit the delete key, it will delete all tracks at that point, which you don't want. You want to hit the back key. I want to make that distinction. It's very important. OK, now that we have a transparent ping, at two seconds, it would be nice if I could fill the screen with that time span. So I'm just going to hit the plus bar here and make it a little bit wider. There we go. That looks good. Just so that we have more room to, to look at this thing. But what I want to do here primarily is I want to, to instruct DaVinci to make this logo move. And we're going to make it move according to size. So if I click the logo, I want to make sure I'm in the Inspector tab in the upper right hand corner, not Mixer, not Metadata, the Inspector. And there's a group of parameters here called Transform. This thing allows you to resize, position, rotate graphics, all that kind of stuff, okay? And all we want to do now is make this thing start from zero, which is, you can't see it, 
to really big to back to zero within the span of two seconds. And the way we do that is add a keyframe. So I'm just gonna put the playhead on top of the logo, make sure it's highlighted. And I'm gonna click the keyframe next to zoom. Now I want you to pay attention to the actual clip in the lower right hand corner of it. You'll see something appear when I click this keyframe button, boom. It adds these icons in the lower right hand corner and this is crucial. So I want you to click now these um, handle, this handle icon and it opens up and it shows you how to add handles to this thing, motion handles, okay? So if I, you can see there's a blue line here and if I make it go up, it makes it go larger in size and if I bring it down, it brings it down to nothing. So we wanna manipulate the size over time. This is the easiest way to do this, not to make the alterations in the transform area of the inspector, but to actually manipulate the timeline to make the movement. This is the easiest way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add keyframes in the middle, the beginning and the end. So we let's do that now. So we have one in the middle already, that little red dot there. I hope you can see that. There it is right there. You can delete these keyframes by making sure it's red and hitting the delete key, okay? It goes away and if, as you can see, there were no other keyframes so it completely removed all the keyframes. So I'm gonna add it again by clicking the little button here and opening it up again. But again, if you hit the Alt key, just click on the blue line and the keyframes will be added. If you wanna delete it, all you have to do is make sure that it's red by clicking on it once, okay? I'll do the middle one here and hitting delete and that deletes the keyframe, very easy. So let me add that back in. So now if I drag the middle, I want the logo to be full screen because that's what we want this transition to do is full screen color. And I wanna make that play triangle just about that size. And in the beginning and the end, I want it to go to zero. So I'm gonna just drag down that keyframe. So it's zero now, let's do the other side too. Make that zero, there we go. Now, as you can see, the keyframes on the left and right still show the icon. It's small, but it's not completely removed. Now, just click the keyframe and make sure that the zoom is reduced to zero. So now I'm actually putting my cursor on the zoom parameter and moving it to the left and making it absolute zero. Let's go to the other one, highlight it. Make sure that that's also zero. Yes. Is it? Yeah. There we go. So if I hit the move the play hit all the way to the left here and hit the space bar and play it, you can see that it went to full screen and went back to zero. Zero to full screen to zero again. Now the motion is a little bit robotic. It doesn't have a humanistic feel to it. It's just like one speed and it's kind of eh. If you want to modify how the rate increases, so slow to fast to slow again, it's very easy to do. Click a keyframe that you want to manipulate and you have these handle controllers here. I'm going to click the uh, second one to the right here and it's going to add these handles. Now you can adjust how this thing moves in speed. Okay. So now it's a little bit more smooth. It slows down when it gets big and then it speeds up again when it goes out. It's pretty slick. You can adjust this in any way that you want, right? You can do all kinds of neat different envelopes of speed any way you want. I like it just to be kind of like this. Yeah, I like that, it's kind of cool. That gives you more middle time here. Let's try it. There you go, yeah, that's really nice. Okay, now I'm just gonna close this back up by hitting the handle controller here. Boop, closes that back up. Now I'm gonna add some swoosh sounds to this thing. So I'm just gonna put my cursor on the uh, layer divider here and just drag this up so I have more real estate below it. And I'm gonna add the first swoosh sound which is an MP3. Let me reduce the size, the view size of the timeline here so I can grab this corner to lengthen or shrink the size of a asset. You can just put your cursor on the far right of edge of this asset and you'll see that icon right there. And then you can just click and hold your mouse and drag it over. All right, that's how you do that. And now I'm gonna add a wave just to demonstrate that both file formats work with this demo. Do the same thing bring it in and make it one size, just so that the whole timeline, all the assets are the same size. Now, if I put the cursor to the far left and hit play, it's all ready to go. So there's the animation. That's what we're gonna apply to OBS Studio. 
Now the question is, how do we make the background truly transparent? And it's, it's, a, it, it, it's not going to make much sense to you, but just bear with me and follow along exactly what I do, and it's going to be fairly easy to, to pull off. Click the transparent ping asset, okay, the logo here. And what I want to do is right-click on it and select New, new Fusion, Fusion Clip. Clip. And what that does is it creates a clip for the Fusion part of the program, which is this magic wand. So if I click the magic wand, you'll see that asset show up in here. That's all you have to do. You add this to the Fusion part of the program by doing what I explained and confirming that the background is transparent. So if I hit the play button in Fusion, did you see that there's a, there's checker? There are checkers in the background that that t is telling you that the background is truly transparent. That's what you want to confirm. That's why I asked you to do this part where you're making this a fusion clip. OK, the next thing that you have to do is something that really threw me off for a long time. And that is you have to highlight all the assets, right click again and select new compound clip. And I'll explain why. Let's see. This is called Stinger. I'll name it, hit create. I'll explain why we did that. Notice that the two wave file assets combined into one, we have a video and we have an audio track, just two. That is absolutely crucial. I'll explain why in just one second. Let's move over to render. So we click the little rocket icon on the far right at the bottom of the program here. And this is another absolutely, absolutely crucial, crucial aspect of, of doing, doing this, this properly. properly. Pay close attention. I'm going to explain what has to be done to export this with Alpha Channel. Okay. First and foremost, I want you to click the custom icon. Okay. Then we want to name it. I'll call it the Stinger 0001. Okay. I want you to select individual clips. Now, this is the reason why we combine them into one, you know, a video and audio asset. Without doing that, this would not work. So click individual clips. Now we want to select the format of QuickTime. Codec is not DNXHR. You want GoPro Cineform. That is what you want. You want to select RGB 16-bit. We want to export to alpha. Make sure that your resolution is... I wouldn't recommend going 3840 by 2160. It's, it's just going to create a large file probably in over 20 megabytes, which is ridiculous for a two second file. My best choice is 1920 by 1080. 1280 by 1080 makes a weird aspect video. That doesn't work out. You could go with 1280 by 720. That creates a very small file, but it's only 720p. Your best bet is 1920 by 1080 HD. That's the best solution there. Uh, quality is best. Uh, alpha mode doesn't matter. It can be straight or pre-multiplied or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Advanced settings. Click advanced settings and make it open up and select the data level full. That's crucial as well. Audio, linear PCM, channels 2, bit depth 16. Really doesn't matter what you do there for the most part. Now click add to render queue. Oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't select the folder. I was like, what the heck? So make sure that it outputs to the right folder on your computer. In this case, I will put it in the downloads folder. Select folder. Now I can click add to render and it adds a job on the far upper right hand corner of the program. Gives you all the details, tells you it's one clip. At that point, click start render and it won't take long. It's only a two second file. Now let's open up OBS and go and make sure that your stinger is selected, okay? If you haven't already created a stinger, you can do that by clicking the plus sign and adding stinger, okay? And renaming it, blah, 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 blah. I've already done that. So I have one called stinger. It is a stinger transition. I'm going to click the gear here and go into properties. And it gives you this screen right here. And I'm going to select that file that I just created in downloads, okay? There it is right there, stinger 001 dash blah, 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 blah. Hit open. And now we can preview this thing to confirm or deny whether or not it works. Cross your fingers. Preview and transition. Yes, transparent with sound. Alpha channel. That means it's not chroma key. You can uh, decide 
when the transition from the A scene to the B scene occurs, you can manipulate it in time. In this case, I've selected time, or you can designate the transition in frames. You're telling OBS Studio when to switch the two scenes. It, it doesn't necessarily know when your logo comes into full screen and covers the entire screen, right? You have to tell it when, when to do that. So you can manipulate that there as long as you understand that. And the reason why I can hear sound while I'm demonstrating this uh, video is that I have monitor and output selected. If you don't have that selected, you will not hear the sound. So that's important as well. Boy, oh boy, I have gone through a heck of a lot of work to figure this out. It was, <laughs> there were some videos that explained it and some that didn't. I went through probably 14 different videos to pull this all together for you. Now you can go back now and add your own logos, add your own transitions, add your own layers and make these really elaborate stinger transitions for your streaming videos. I wish you all the luck. Stay strong and keep fighting. This is Scott Victor from Blue Fox Creative. Oh, get, get some. some.